Many men have no idea how to communicate with their woman and because of that, they become very emotional. And because they become very emotional, the woman has no other choice but to be angry. And it really stems to the man's fault in realizing that he did not know how to express his truth because when he looked at mom and dad, he saw mom and dad fighting, he probably looked at dad and he probably saw dad as weak. And even though he did not want to become like his father, he essentially became his father. So the summer before dental school, I literally had one of the most painful breakups of my life. And here was something that I loved so much, but it just did not work out. And even though it was one of the most painful moments of my life, it actually ended up being a blessing in disguise because of the motivation that it caused me to go ahead and focus on myself. So while everyone else was kind of going to school and getting grades and getting a job, I had no more friends because I spent most of my time with the woman that I was dating. And because when we broke up, I was just like, well, what do I do now? I have no friends. I have no one else close to me. I have no one else around me. No one understands me. I feel freaking alone. I have nothing to do. Everyone else is going to school. I dropped out of dental school. So I literally took a one-way trip ticket to Asia. For the first year or so, I was just traveling around Thailand, really finding myself backpacking, seeing the things from different perspectives. And from all of those string of events, I ended up getting into a place in Bali, right? I met a mentor, he told me to fly up to Bali, I was like, cool. And I didn't know this at the time, but in Bali ended up being one of the most spiritual years of my life, just essentially being in the jungles, living, meditating, all of those things, finding out more about myself, finding out all the pains that not only essentially happened, from you know the past relationships that I had, but also the anger that I also had for my parents. And I started realizing that as I was going around to all these spiritual circles, they're like, oh, you have a wounded inner child. You have a wounded inner child. You have a wounded inner child. I'm like, what the heck is a wounded inner child? What are you talking about? I'm a grown man. I don't have some wounded inner child in me. Like it just made no sense when I first heard the concept of, oh, maybe it's because all of the anger and the pain and the lack of positive relationships that you have in your life, maybe it's because you have a wounded inner child. And again, I was so confused because everyone else around me was so spiritual. They're like, you have a wounded inner child, Mike. You have a wounded inner child, Mike. And I had no idea what it was, but essentially what they told me was every painful relationship that I had in my life in my past was because of this wounded child. And what, what, what is actually a wounded child? This is what I was curious about. Well, from my earliest memories and your earliest memories, this is where you were taught the mental models that you would go ahead and interact with other people in the entire world, right? From the first relationship that you had, which was essentially your mother and then your father, you essentially were taught how to communicate to the people that you actually love. And for most people, most parents had no idea how to exactly communicate, right? They maybe fought, they maybe yelled, they maybe argued, they maybe complained about money, Maybe, for example, the father ended up becoming weak and the woman and the mother became angry because the father became weak. And before you know it, you literally just have like a bad family dynamic essentially raising you, no matter how amazing parents they were, they also had their flaws, where essentially this is exactly how you were taught to express your emotions as well as expressing your communication with the people that you go ahead and, for example, love, right? And for most people, most parents did not argue in the right way. They did not overcome conflict in the right way. So obviously when you're younger, and the thing that you notice when you're younger, the, the two people that loved each other so much to the point where they created you, now this is exactly how they talk to each other. So this is exactly how you go ahead and communicate with the world. So essentially your wounded inner child, what I learned from going to all these spiritual events and tantra events, was essentially when you were younger, you noticed this, and you were so hurt because the people that you loved the most were fighting, and deep down you blamed yourself, and your inner child took the responsibility for their fight. So this child was wounded. Depending how it is that you were wounded, essentially will give you the relationship with love. Are you chasing love? Are you a love chaser? Or you a love avoider? Do you run away from love, right? Are you anxious all the time and you wanna be attached? Or do you not like being around people too much and you wanna be detached? All of this was learned from your parents. All this was learned from your parents. If your parents were constantly fighting, constantly fighting, constantly fighting, right? You learned a way to go ahead and communicate. If your father was constantly running away from your mother, you learned exactly like what to do if you're a man or a woman based off of that dynamics. If your father was a really, really good, nice guy and your mom became very, very controlling and overbearing, right? Then you learned exactly who you're going to essentially become your father. Or if you're a woman, you learn to become overbearing. Like for example, your mother, we tend to learn exactly who we will become based off of the trauma or the wounded inner child that our younger self experienced in our formative years from ages six to 12. So depending on how, for example, painful the experience was of seeing like your parents fight and argue and all of those things, that's exactly how you were taught 
to either receive or give love. Does that make sense? And again, this is one of the most painful things because I was looking back in my relationships and I was like, why does every single relationship that I have, no matter how amazing it starts off, why does it always end up in pain? Why does it always end up in arguing? Why does it always end up in conflict? Why did something so beautiful, why did it get so soiled? And it's because I did not understand this, but I was adopting the communication patterns of my parents and they were adopting the communication patterns from their parents. And if you really think about it, most people's parents had no idea how to communicate. So the tools that we were taught on how to communicate with our loved ones do not work. But yet, because we fall in love with what is familiar, not what is healthy, we bring that into every single relationship. And again, if you really wanna go ahead and have meaningful relationships, and you wanna go ahead and create that relationship that actually not only excites you, but fulfills you, you need to understand what pain points and how that inner child that you had when you were younger was actually wounded. So actually, how do you go ahead and figure that out? Well, the first step is finding out, do you actually have a wounded inner child? Well, here are kind of the main signs that I've noticed if you have a wounded child. The first one is every single relationship that you have ever had ends up badly. The first sign if you have a wounded inner child is look at your past relationships. You probably had some good people in your life for just a short amount of time, but for some reason, the longer you spend time with them, for some reason, instead of bringing the best out of each other, you bring out the worst out of each other. And that's how you know that you have a wounded inner child. If every single relationship that you have through time, you bring out the worst in each other instead of the best in each other. And I saw this in the time, like if I literally look back at my previous relationships, it doesn't matter if it was like, you know, relationships with women that I was dating or relationships with guys that I wanna go ahead and do business with or do sports with. Through time, I always realized that the relationships brought out the worst in each other. If that's the case, what's the point in the relationship? What's the point in the relationship? If in the relationship, you only bring out the worst in each other, when you are in a relationship, you should spend time with people that only bring out the best in you, where you bring out the best in them and they bring out the best in you. Life is too damn short to go ahead and spend time with people that only bring the worst out of you. And if you are spending time with people that are only bringing the worst out of you and you are only bringing the worst out of them through time, it means you have a wounded inner child. It means you have something inside of you, a mommy or daddy issue, a lack of love, or overloved, where you now adopted that and you brought it into the next relationship. If that is something that you're going through right now, it just means you have a wounded child. It doesn't mean it's bad, it just means you have to identify it. Identifying it is one of the first steps to actually solving the problem. The second thing is you get emotional around your lover when you argue. One of the biggest things that I realized is for some reason, you know, in the beginning, I wouldn't get essentially emotional, right? I wouldn't get it emotional. If I was dating a girl and it was like good and fun and the love making was good, I was like, okay, this is good. But for some reason, the longer I spend time with a woman, for some reason, the more emotional I became. When she wanted to bring something up and she wanted to go and say something that was like troubling her, for some reason, I was like looking inside, I was like, why am I getting all emotional? Why am I literally getting emotional? She's arguing with me, but for some reason, I'm getting emotionally triggered and I wanna go in and argue back. Oh, but you know, my, I've never had a wounded inner child. I'm, I'm a man, right? I'm a man. I don't, I shouldn't like, like cry. I shouldn't go ahead and feel all these like negative emotions. I, I shouldn't feel any emotions. But for some reason, how come I was like in this relationship and as time was going by, I was getting more and more and more and more and more and more and more emotional. It's because there was something that I didn't understand that I learned from my past that was causing all these emotions to come up. Every single trigger that she ended up doing, the behavior that she had, reminded me of something in the past that I saw either mommy and daddy having some type of a conversation with that didn't end well. And for some reason, I was adopting the behaviors of either my mom or my dad, depending on when they weren't heard in a specific conflict, that one of them get, would get emotional. So then I started thinking, okay, well, if I'm getting more emotional through time with this relationship, it just means that I don't know exactly how to express what it is that I actually want out of the relationship. It's not the fact that the woman was overly emotional, it was the fact that I had no idea how to express it. So when I had no idea how to express exactly what I wanted out of the relationship, I revert back to my inner child self, my childlike self where the only way that he could communicate if he couldn't express what it is that he wanted was he would just whine, he would complain, he would get emotional. But that's not the characteristics of a man, that's the characteristics of a little boy. And I started realizing, why am I adopting similar behaviors from when I was a little child into a relationship where I'm a mature man or when I'm supposed to be a mature man with this mature woman, right? So that was the second sign that showed that there was a wounded inner child that I had to go ahead and identify because of the fact that why should I be emotional in a relationship, right? 
I, as a man, should be able to know exactly how to express my truth instead of just trying to shove it deep down and what, do passive aggressiveness behavior, where essentially the only way I could go out and communicate with my lover is just uh, doing things like being emotional? Like, it just doesn't make sense at all, right? Many men, many men have no idea how to communicate with their woman, and because of that, they become very emotional. And because they become very emotional, the woman has no other choice but to be angry. And it really stems to the man's fault in realizing that he did not know how to express his truth because when he looked at mom and dad, he saw mom and dad fighting, he probably looked at dad, right? And he probably saw dad as weak. And even though he did not want to become like his father, he essentially became his father. That's essentially wounded inner child one-on-one, right? The third one is you blame the world and you don't take responsibility. So around several years ago, I was building this business and I was so excited about this business because I thought this was going to be the thing that was going to make me just the most amount of money, right? The most amount of money, the amount of fantasies that I had about this business. I was like, you know, this is going to be so much money. I'm never have to work ever again. This is going to be great. And I started having like all these partners and we started building it really, really, really big. And then guess what? Expectations didn't match reality. The business partners started fighting. And before you know it, the business that I wanted to go ahead and build, that this was going to be the thing that would retire every single person that I loved, essentially died. Essentially died. And in that moment in time, all I could think about was it was not my fault and everyone else was to blame but me. So many people have this dumb mindset where they play the victim, They're like it's his fault, it's that fault, it's her fault. It's all these people's fault that my relationship sucks, that I'm fat and unhealthy, that I'm broken poor, that I have no friends. It's everyone else's fault. But what no one understands is the biggest person's fault it is, is yourself, the person that you see in your mirror, right? Because you have no self-control. And not only that, but you can't even control your emotions. So you take all of this emotional baggage that you learned when you were younger on when you didn't get what you want and you blame the world. Just remember when you were like a little kid, you never took responsibility. You're like, mom, this person did this, this person did that. Ah, no, honey, maybe it's because you were just being a thing where you caused that and you weren't ever taught that your actions and your behaviors, it's all cause and effect. If you look at the people around you and they're constantly disrespecting you, it's not their fault. It's your fault that you are allowing that disrespect to happen. And deep down, the reason why they disrespect you is because you don't even respect yourself. You literally don't respect yourself. And because you don't respect yourself and you don't want to take responsibility that all of this is your fault, you want to blame the world. You want to blame that person and that person. And it's that girl's fault that your love life sucks. Or it's that guy's fault. He, he, he has more better love life than I do, right? You blame everyone else but your own. Another sign that you have a wounded inner child. Another one is you don't know how to set boundaries with people and you let people walk all over you. When I was younger, for some reason, I would spend time with people that would constantly disrespect me. But I was so afraid to go ahead and find new friends. I was like, well, this is the best friends that I could ever have. So I would just constantly let them disrespect me, constantly let them disrespect me. If ever I was like with a woman, right? And there was a moment that she started becoming ungrateful and she started not essentially respecting me in the way that I wanted. For some reason, I would just stick around. I was thinking, oh, well, you know, like she's the most prettiest thing that I could ever get. I will never be able to find another girl like her. You know, this girl, like, like this is as good as it gets. If I lose her, then I, I won't be able to go ahead and, for example, get laid ever again. Like these are the, the little insecure thoughts that I would think about when I was younger. This is the best thing that I could ever find. I should latch onto her and make sure she doesn't get away, right? And again, that's not healthy. That's not a healthy thing to be in a loving relationship and to just like anxiously attach to someone because you're afraid of, for example, losing them. But then to swing to the other side and you're like, you know what, I'm never gonna emotionally open up because I've tried that in the past and that freaking hurt. So then you try the opposite and you're like, oh, well, this doesn't work ever. And you start realizing how come no matter what I try in a relationship, it's because I don't feel fulfilled either way. And it's not essentially you loving someone and them loving you. It's essentially you don't know exactly how to express your boundaries. There was a moment in time where you allowed the other person to disrespect you and you let it go unnoticed. If you let things go unnoticed, what happens is that disrespect becomes a standard. That disrespect becomes a standard. And at any given moment, what you really need to understand in any relationship is if someone doesn't respect you to the way where you want to be respected, then you at any given moment need to be able to go ahead and walk away. Oh, but Mike, I want to go ahead and deal with it. Sometimes it's just better to just walk away. Sometimes it's just better to walk away. Life is too short to spend time with people that do not understand your boundaries, that do not respect you for who you are and what you are actually worth. You need to understand this, right? Because the longest thing that you could ever do and the worst thing you could ever do is stay with someone that disrespects you. And here's how people feel respected. If you're a man, you're gonna understand this. If you're a woman, you're gonna understand this. So for a man to feel love, 
He needs to be respected. How a man feels respected is for a woman to be grateful for every single thing that he does. Because a man does so much things. A man works. He's going ahead and suffering out there. He's sacrificing his body, his mind, his time, his energy just so he can provide for the woman and his kids. And the worst thing that could ruin a man is for him to trade so much time at work to sacrifice himself out there at the job and to come home to an ungrateful wife. If he doesn't feel that, if a man doesn't feel respect, he will not feel loved. So how does a woman feel respect? A woman feels respect with her emotions. She needs to emotionally feel safe. She needs to emotionally feel secure. I had this friend, right? I had this friend, he has a really open relationship uh, and an open communication with his like girl, right? And he's like essentially saying, hey, baby girl, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the club or the party or all these things, but if I see another girl and I sleep with her, and there's these two scenarios that happens. Which one are you gonna be more angry at? And he's like, number one, I meet a girl at this club or party, we bang, I never see her again, and I don't care about her. Or the second one, I don't we don't we don't we don't have sex, we don't sleep with each other, but I meet her, I really like her, I take her around, maybe I travel with her, maybe we spend the entire day creating a bunch of you know cool memories. We went and maybe went to that little photo booth in the corner and we took a bunch of cute pictures. She said that she would get more angry at him for emotionally investing in another woman than just plain out sleeping with a woman that he didn't care about, right? So you can see that in a woman's mind, it's completely different than, for example, a man. A man just wants to be respected by feeling grateful. A woman needs to feel emotionally secure that the man really does care about her emotionally to the point where she cares more about a man emotionally cheating with her than he does, she does with a man physically cheating with her, right? So again, it's all of those things. That's exactly how you go ahead and express certain things. One is more gratitude, another one is more, for example, emotional, right? And it's very interesting because the boundaries that are set with two people, especially man and woman, they're always gonna be confused whenever it comes to like communicating with each other because it's like men are in a logical realm, women are in an emotional realm. So even though both can be right, both can never understand each other to the point where a man can understand a man or a woman can understand a woman because they just have different hormones that are, that are running their lives. Like, do you understand that all of us that we have, our boundaries, our goals, our values are really stemmed with the main hormone that is essentially running us, right? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how smart we are. It doesn't matter how you know, higher level thinking that we are able to go ahead and think now. At the end of the day, we're still merely animals that are just run by our hormones, right? Men by testosterone, women by estrogen right? And at the end of the day, it's many of our behaviors and our desires and our urges. And all of that is stemmed from those hormones that essentially run our life. Does that make sense? All right? To the fifth one, you secretly really don't like your friends and they're just your friends because you have no one else to hang out with. Another reason for a wounded inner child. When you're a wounded inner child, you think you have no options. You just think, well, oh, you know, mom and dad are fighting, but I have no other mom and dad, so I can't just leave mom and dad. So no matter how much mom and dad are fighting, I should just stay, I should just stay, I should just stay. So you learn that from your parents. No matter how much your parents fought and how much they blamed each other and how much they complained about each other, you saw, okay, when people love with each other, like I can't just find new parents, so I could just go ahead and stay. So you literally take that same mindset and you're like, oh, here are all these friends around me that are constantly complaining and whining and moaning and groaning and all of these things, complaining about their love life, their money life, their jobs, all that stuff. And you just sit and listen because you thought, well, I, maybe I don't have any other friends. Well, I don't want to go out and find new friends. I'm afraid. I'm afraid of moving to a new city. I'm afraid of traveling to the other side of the world. You are taking all of the lessons you've learned when you were younger and you're, now you're bringing it into your relationship right now. And if you look around at all of your friends, and all of your friends suck, they all complain. They don't make you a better person. They don't motivate you. They don't push you to grow. Guess what? Maybe it's because you are bringing little inner child into your future self and maybe you have not learned to actually overcome that. When I figured that out, I was like, you know what, I need to go ahead and take a one-way trip to Asia. I need to run away from this. And initially, it doesn't sound good when you run away from your problems, but sometimes you have to go ahead and run away to another place to find yourself. You literally have to get lost to find yourself. And the only way you could actually lose yourself is to lose all of your surroundings for just a small period of time. It doesn't mean that if you have, to, you have to say bye to them forever, but it just means for a period of time, you actually have to be a little bit selfish and focus on yourself to actually become the person that it is that you wanna become. And literally one of the things that helped me become that person was literally time and money freedom. I found ways to separate my time from income so I could literally focus on all of the pain points that I had in the past so I did not repeat the exact same mistakes 
in my future. If you want to find out exactly how I did it, check out the links below. If you want to go ahead and start an e-commerce business, check out the third link. If you want to start a personal brand, book a call with me and my team and we'll build your personal brand together in the link below. Or if you want to find the fastest and easiest way to make passive income, check out the first link in the description.